Okay, here's a slight detour. Now, never mind me, I'm kind of sick, which is awesome. But, what I need to do is I need to put a new bushing in here. And there's a problem with these Cummins. It's not a problem, it's just a proclivity of them. They have this tapered uh, end on them. Look at the big end, it's, it's the same all the way around, right? Well, there went my tool. At any rate, so the tapered end is an issue. So, what I've done is I've grabbed another wrist pin, an old one. This is the one that was actually wrecked. I uh, just ground this whole thing down so that this could slide in. The inside surface is going to get reground anyway to fit the new wrist pin. But um, because it's tapered, as you can see there, I had to basically create a very similar taper. And version 1.0 of this didn't go so hot, uh, but I have extra bushings. The other three that were in here are perfectly fine, so it's no big deal. But let me. Uh, do this so as you can see I'm on focus there we go you can see the idea here is that when you're pressing down evenly that this will grab as evenly as you can all the way around it So that's the idea. I'll let you know when I'm set up and we'll start pressing. All right, let's see how this goes. Try to tighten down the thingy bob, buddy. I really need to make this. I don't use it enough, honestly. It would be nice. If this thing were uh, pneumatic, but switch over to the finger method. Okay, so the thing slipped a little bit. It's starting to go though. I'll play so far. Let me retool. Okay, back at it. I think it won't move. We'll see. I'm sorry for the video orientation. I'm no cinematographer. And now we're rocking up. So, retool. Big three. Ah. Let's just keep after it. <clears throat> okay. So I kind of have to hold this piece here because it wants to push out that way. Take like seventy billion. Okay. Oh, 
what's happening. See, <laughs> I took it out, it's going in straight, so that's good. It's just, you know, if anyone's ever used one of these hydraulic presses, they know that they're just tricky. Very tricky. Case in point. Let's go again. No, nope. not gonna do it. Boo. I'm sure, y'all are, if anyone's watching, <laughs> are yelling at me like, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And the reason why is I'm not that smart, guys. Just not that smart. I uh, have limited tooling, so I do the very best I can with what I got. That may do it. So what part of the issue was is it was spreading out the load too thin of an area over here. We'll see what happens here. Someone's yelling at their dog, buddy. There we go. Let's see what happens. Negative Ghost Rider. Okay. I'm trying to use this fat end now. I wasn't using that before. Seems pretty level. The only YouTube video I've seen that's done this has got something kind of similar going on. So, <clears throat> let's see. Okay. goes. Now she's going. I'm just going easy at this. Nothing too fancy. Of course the hope is I can get the tool out as well. That may just require, it's pretty close, there we go, okay, well, <laughs> join me in a few, I'm going just a touch more, just a touch more, going to be pretty close, oh, it helps if you tighten that down, dummy. There we go. That's good, right there. All right, join me in a few seconds here. I'm gonna knock that thing out. I'm kind of hoping it goes easy. In fact, what I may do is just turn the thing over and try it that way. The fear is, is that the rod has pressed itself around, but 
I don't, I don't see it being an issue. Hell, we'll just do it now. Yep, bushing stain. Excellent. I briefly thought about lubing this up, but I don't know. I guess the moral of the story is, of course, we're not through the woods yet, but the moral of the story is, is that you don't have to spend 800 some odd dollars on a tool if you don't want to. You've got a welder, some other tools. You can probably just cobble something together yourself. You know, I mean, I am not God's gift to Mechanicking, but I try to be as resourceful as I can anyway. The rod straighten up and hopefully lean on this one here. Yep, there she goes. socket in between there which is not surprising uh, considering I machined my this doohickey with this incredible tool called a uh, angle grinder gotta love some angle grinders I'm gonna get a socket in there But here we are I'm using an 18 in the worst way possible. I don't know, I always like to say it's not dumb if it works. I know it's hardly original, but. Yeah. And the reason why I'm replacing this wrist pin, let's see, I'm gonna see if I can catch it. The reason why I'm replacing it is because <clears throat> this wrist pin got jacked up anyway. And here we are. Alright, join me in a second. Okay, there's a closer, better look at the tool. See that taper to it? You guys saw that. It's the reason why you have to do it. But I got the bushing in. So I'll take the new wrist pin to the machine shop. And what they'll do is they'll just size it to this. They'll clean it up. It'll go in. It'll do its thing. It'll be perfect. It's it's definitely good enough for me. So, if you got a tapered wrist pin, comment on John Deere and Cummins stuff. And you got a welder. Take an old wrist pin. Grind it down so it's smaller. So that it fits the bushing. Scribe your line along the bottom. Weld it in, in the taper as close as you can. And then get you a file and just start filing it and slide a new bushing on and off, on and off, just trying to get it to go. And meet up as much as possible. 
Let me show you what was happening with some of the other ones. <sighs> Sorry. So first off, this is the old one. It probably could have worked, but anyway. So as you see along the edges here, is that if you don't get that edge of your tool that you made smooth, like that, it'll start grabbing it in different places and just start chewing it up. And I actually smack this one back into some kind of shape because they come, I think they roll them into this please way, whatever, they just have a sheet of the material or whatever. I don't, I don't know how they do it. But here's another new one. And what happened was is it was just getting pinched. And because I didn't have even pressure around the edges, it just started splitting it at that seam. And so that's what goes wrong on these things sometimes. But I'm confident that my machinist can make this perfectly round and fit perfectly to my wrist pin. The reason why I'm doing this myself and didn't hand it to him to do is that he doesn't have the tooling for it. It's custom tooling. They don't do enough uh, Cummins stuff. I'm here in Oceanside. No one has those trucks. Well, so they have the trucks, but they're not doing what I'm doing, which is rebuilding an old engine. And there's no tractors, so there's no reason for anybody uh, here to be doing that. So, And if you're wondering if this is a funny-looking rod particularly for a Cummins, it's because it's going into a 4.5 liter 4BT. And so you can look up the part number if you'd like. 393, okay, Apple, low power mode, no one cares. <laughs> Sorry about that. Connecting rod number is 395940. We'll call that a 5. Okay. And I'll uh, clean up these burrs here a little bit there. Really, really, that was relatively painless, to be honest with you. Could have been much worse. Could have been much worse. Of course, my machinist will tell me if I fuck this up. Pardon my French, but I doubt that I did. Uh, they're designed to be pressed in and then individually fit to the new wrist pin. So, at any rate, thanks for joining me on that little adventure. I'm happy so far. We'll see how it goes.